It is now January 1st, first day of the new year, and it is time to share our secret project that we have been working on behind the scenes for years now. If you've seen our content before, you may recognize this lake. It is nowhere near the village where the workshop is. It's about an hour away. But even so, we have been coming up here constantly because this is the location of our biggest project to date. We built our own cabin in the woods. It has been very hard to keep this whole build, this whole project kind of to ourselves the last few years, but it's been so sporadically worked on, uh, I would say up until the last six months. And that's when we've been coming up here like every weekend working on something else. Here's the grassy. Now I'm just making the island bar. <laughs> we were doing that in Asia, right? Yeah. We bought this plot of land. I want to say it was like, January 2020. We decided not to be documenting the whole process in the same way that we've been documenting everything that goes on at the workshop, just because it was so sporadic. And it was also like, we kind of needed like one less project to film, frankly. I think you're gonna recognize a lot of like the furniture or the photos or the anything else that you kind of see around because all of it was built in the background or even in the foreground of some of our other videos. <laughs> so like, you guys actually saw this whole kitchen being built and this unit as well. Oh, and the, t the table that was in the background of one of our van build videos. The stairs I know was. Same with like all of the railings that was in the background. You guys saw when we were printing all of the panoramas and the photos. Also one of the coolest things about this is when we came across or when we were told about this plot, that was selling for absurdly cheap with the foundation and everything. The lot next to us was also for sale. So Lottie's family was also able to buy the land right next door and we've been able to construct kind of conjoining cabins. The vision we have is that this is kind of a new touristy spot. So we're hoping that it will be able to become a rental in the future. Still an unfinished uh, place. You can see we haven't made the cushions for this couch yet. Well, every piece of furniture you say, apart from this couch and these chairs, was all built at the workshop. So there's a lot of progress that we want to document with you and we just need to start filming it. We didn't know how to approach it and uh, we're gonna start filming the full workload that happens in a week at the workshop. I don't really like it that way. I liked the other one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I just need to make it actually so it works as I showed because now I have nothing to attach it to. So I think I should make it a spine. I need to get downstairs work with Lottie and we need to kind of make a plan for this week for all of these projects that we have moving. So we'll catch you in the morning when we start making our way back to the workshop. Hope you guys had the most incredible Christmas and New Year's with your families. We missed you and we're excited for this fresh slate and to get all this stuff done. drove and we picked up these metal cutoffs and now Kavi is going to be helping us reshape, cut, paint, form everything for the handrails at the cabin. We're 
We're taking the same approach for the second floor staircase as we did for the first. For some reason, we didn't put two and two together that we could do the exact same thing or else ideally we would have done them both at once. We really like the look of this. It feels very modern and it doesn't really block your view of the greater space, but it's also an incredibly affordable idea just because all we're doing is buying these metal pipes, cutting them to size, and then Lottie was able to design 3D printed holders that would attach them to the ceiling itself. For the first floor staircase, Lottie had made railings out of wood, stained them, and then attached them to the wall. But for the second floor, because of how like steep it is to go up and down. An easier alternative was to make something that we're calling like monkey bars. It's a little bit more of a playful approach to getting up and down that staircase, but it feels much more natural than the more typical railing would just because of the incline. Hopefully Kavi will be able to finish this in the next few days. <laughs> I like that idea, a monkey bar. This is amazing. Not handlebars in a cabin, going like this sideways, but actually grabbing, swinging down, maybe even exercising on it but I mainly like the industrial design, it's so cool. And then it will be sprayed black. Eee! What a... <laughs> I hadn't seen it yet, that looks awesome. That was a great idea, thank you buddy. You're welcome, I love it. This is better than I expected it would be, honestly. Now we have to jump to some of the container home tasks. Over the Christmas holiday, we had our windows installed, so now the container unit is completely enclosed. Dad's crew is on the schedule for next week to do some of the drywall, so that means that this week we need to be moving ahead with both the electricity and the plumbing. This container project definitely went through some development and uh, evolution. Electrician is coming this week, so I need to sort out, finalize the design and, and prep him look where all the outlets and switches are gonna be. Outlets for appliances for a stationary coffee machine fridge, oven, microwave, dishwasher, charging laptops, now some sitting, then we need TV, we need computers, we need electric heaters, we need primary lights, we need ambient lights, I think we're gonna make it work. You need to know where it all goes so when he gets there we're not unprepared. Oh, don't forget the charging outlets outside for electric bikes. Peter is our electrician guy. He's been like a, one of these tradies that are like a family members. They've been uh, doing jobs now and then for dad for so many years since I was a kid. <laughs> now he's like an uncle. What are you doing here? We gotta get you home, little one. How'd you get out? How'd you get out? We purchased this two kilowatt electric heater that is Wi-Fi integrated. And Pavel is now taking it apart, taking a look at the components and what we can do with it because we'll definitely extend the cable and get the screen outside of there <laughs> so we have it nicely visible somewhere and also we're going to be installing three fans really quiet fans to blow it up to our feet so this is when we're plugged in to electricity to a grid or maybe a car charging stations uh, we don't have to be burning diesel to stay warm <laughs> this is awesome this electric heater definitely went through some transformation <laughs> since we purchased it brand new last week. <laughs> we added all these three fans and now we're doing a safety feature because it was pretty much only just the heat um, seeping out, you know, no air circulation in there. And because we're gonna have it hidden below the couch, we need to make sure this is cooled down, this is not gonna cause any fire. So we're gonna be blowing that hot air through the exchanger out in the van and uh, and we need to sort out a safety feature so when that spiral is on the fans blow normally we would able we would be able to have that fan on a remote control like this but i'm worried one of us would forget one day to turn it on and then this would start heating up with two kilowatts with no air circulation and i don't know that sounds risky to me <laughs> so we're sorting out system 
we have relay for AC so when we turn the heater on the fans automatically turn on but that's what we're trying to do now so this is two kilowatt heater we have three power modes we installed extra quiet three fans to blow through the hot spiral and we can adjust the rpm as well i don't think we'll be using it much to drain the power bank but once we are plugged to the grid or car charging station this is absolutely amazing alternative heating it's pretty good these winter days in a barn when we have the van parked because we're consistently plugged in and we can be just running the electric heater inside not to run the diesel heater and smell in inside and we don't also have to be heating up the whole barn. It's pretty cool like little oasis closed inside of a building. So we just got back from town and we had to pick up all of the paint that we want to be doing for this week which includes the gray that will be on the outside of the container and then also we want to paint like one wall of each bedroom at the cabin so we picked out a few colors i'm hoping they'll look all right now i'm just kind of setting up taking some stickers off the window and i need to start painting in the next few days i'm not really sure if it's smart though because it's kind of humid out and I think it's going to be snowing in the next few days as well. So I don't know. I think we'll be fine. We might as well go for it, right? The gray that we're going for is this gray here. We bought new brushes and rollers and all of that, but I think the fastest way will be if I take a brush, dip it in a paint and slather on as much as I can. Ollie? He's like the untouchable creature. He's too fast. You can never like touch him. Hi, bud. Hi. Oh, oh. Oh, am I earning your trust? Can I touch? Can I touch? Oh. Look at that. Good job. Is there such thing as outdoor, ruinable painting clothes that are also attractive? Nope. store finishing plumbing in a container and picking up melamine for another shelving system in a cabin it's a lot Pavel is now packing cyberbike that goes to the states and Kavi is helping with the plumbing it's it's for well, three people it's crazy busy now the electrician was with us this morning that's gonna be progress over the next few days we we're just deciding on all the outlets we want to have the container ready for furniture at the end of this month we have this photo of the bed frame and we're trying to find some melamine that's like closest to it. That's morning. Kind of, sort of. Mm. Less saturated, less contrasted. I bet. This is our ride most of the time when we're picking up material. Seatbelts don't work, nothing locks, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> It's gonna be expensive. Uh, <laughs> that's gonna, that is gonna be a lot of money. Well, I need to, uh, I hope I have enough. One second. Can you straighten it there? Yeah. And then close this.
glad he's gonna kill me. I just dropped one. See how the corner chipped? I don't usually record the long format of us working together, but I feel like if I did, it's just like a comedy of somebody trying to teach somebody else trade, and that person just like hunky dorying around and f***ing up and, and then getting yelled at by the boss. going about the TV unit. Kavi finished the set of kind of like railings almost. <laughs> look at how they're drying. <laughs> they look awesome. And here are the monkey bars that he welded. Get him. Get him. Oh, rolling <laughs> This container is gonna be so awesome, especially for us when we work these long hours. And we have no roof, you know, <laughs> we stay in a van or we juggle between a cabin and a workshop. So this will be a beautiful, quiet, warm place for me and Margaret when we want to get from the rush of the workshop. It's going to be awesome following years as an overall concept on this land because it will be separate island guest house for everybody who is visiting us or whoever it is convenient uh, to stay. TV wrap around, so called. <sighs> Strategic space filler, storage space filler, TV wrap around. <laughs> Now that we're getting closer to the weekend, we're starting to prepare for some of the upcoming projects that we have planned for next week on the van, such as the installation of the electric step and installing our DIY spoiler. Ironically, our van build project requires the most forethought and planning compared to the container home and the cabin. For the electric step, we need to make sure that it goes high enough that we have enough clearance, and for the spoiler, we have to make sure it can face up to 150 kilometer wind speeds. I suppose it makes sense that the smaller the space that you have to live, the more detail-oriented you have to be, but I'm just really happy we don't have to consider weight or road safety when we're building the cabin and the container home. This is the 3D print that Lottie made for the spoiler. It will be holding up this baby right up there because when we were driving without a spoiler, you could really hear the movement of like the solar panels and everything. It made us really nervous. But this is the bracket for the solar uh, wind deflector. I'm curious, I'm, I'm doing it from S ASA material. Uh, that should be more resistance to towards weather conditions. And I'm gonna just print four brackets and, and glue it. I think it should do. Oh, have you noticed the new enclosure Prusha sent us? This is amazing, it is. It has temperature sensor, it has a humidity sensor. It's also equipped with a filtration system. when you're operating in the same room as a welder. Looks like a background behind a monitor screen. That or that mm, probably won't be that bright. I think it's actually a much subtler difference between these two. Uh -huh. That looks that, nice. That's yeah. more acceptable. Smooth these all out. We packed them up. New cables for the place. And then we're loading in this van. 
full of our stuff. One hour later. Iraq! Successful transport. Successful week. Shout of homemade sleeve all for aggressive, progressive week. <laughs> Master B. Master B. I think we make that look much easier than it is. <laughs> This town, Road Nodes, been around my family for, for decades, for generations, I would say. This was uh, German territory back days, and my great-grandparents are from here. My great-grandpa was actually pretty good tradie, and there is still a foundation from his workshop. Pretty cool fact. <laughs> my dad was here as a kid. Um, I remember it, this place from my childhood, because we know the territory. It kind of this opportunity to purchase this land just land that on our lap. Just wrapped up painting in this bedroom. Still have to do the upstairs. And Lottie is going for it with the railing. That was no good. <laughs> <laughs> the setup, we need a lot of like grips and everything else because these are super steep and like pretty small. Kind of like attic-y. The best stairs. will be the monkey bars. Always this fun room going up and down. Not standard handlebars, but monkey bars. <laughs> Push yourself up, pull yourself down. That's gonna be killer. You wouldn't believe how much uh, how much 3D printing we actually use in here. I brought a 3D printer for some details and it's been running day and night. All of this cabinet making is now advanced with the 3D printing. It's like I hear it in my sleep, full on. <laughs> So we have this old couch and chair set from Lottie's grandma and it is really comfortable. It's nice, but the color's kind of, uh. so we were trying to find a way to color this room or decorate this room. So this kind of fits because reupholstering or, or buying something even new is quite an expense. So we're trying to kind of lessen those because it is a larger house to populate. It's a difficult task. But it's a really nice quality couch from 60s or 70s. <laughs> Never used, always covered with a blanket. It was only special room for guests. Hey. Uh-oh. It's mine, I just took my thumb ups. But moving on. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do the first monkey, monkey bar swing. Well, I'm scared, but these are massive screws and they went really deep. Well, maybe should I? Oh, this moved. What moved? I think, wow, this is amazing exercising opportunity. I love this, this is so much fun. So you go up, you hang like this, even like a fun, wow, even for dips. <laughs> this nice. is that's why I like it. I love that idea right away, bunny. Go ahead, start walking up. I want to see like your pattern. I would probably be grabbing one and go like this, or going the other way, going like this. Yep, yep. But going down is fun. It's gonna be just swing. Love it. I think this is looks this looks great. Wow, this is amazing how it ties the colors together right away. It helped a lot. Love it. it did. Otherwise, this room was like very kind of bare and 
depressing feeling. This is nice, yeah. Oh. <laughs> This is so interesting shelving solution. How uh, floating shelves are for a limited purpose, ideally when you have the shelf closed from both sides, so it's more stable and you can load it. Otherwise it's for really small trinkets, lightweight stuff. These brackets, these are something new and innovative that make it so subtle. I made a template for routing the shelves in so it hides nicely and I 100% love the style and modularity, what we can play with different colors and different shades. It's so interesting. <laughs> Container, cabin, camper van, classic plan for the following week. CCC.